So with that out, we can now crank over the engine and see can we get oil pressure. There you are now, welcome back to the workshop. On today's episode, we are gonna diagnose the oil pump problem with this Cooper S race engine. So on the last episode, you see me uh, take the engine out of the car. We have it just set up here in the corner of the workshop and we're going to start stripping it back. So first things first is to strip back some of the ancillaries. So we gotta get the walk off, get the walk off. It sounds like some sort of a, um, euphemism for something, but it's not. In this case, it is taken off the clutch housing. Then we need to release the flywheel from the end of the crankshaft. Then we can take the drop gear housing off. Uh, before we do that, we need to drop the oil out because there is brand new oil in this engine that I want to keep. Uh, so I have a lovely fresh clean container to drop it into. Drop the oil out, then we can take off the drop gear housing and we can start having a look at the oil pump. A couple of comments came in on the last video uh, referencing what people thought it was and I think uh, we have it boiled down to probably one of two things. Well, it, it's one of three things. It's either the gasket on the oil pump has failed, has split or isn't sitting properly. The second is the oil pump itself isn't working right, so we might have to measure the oil pump up and check and see if the clearance is correct in the oil pump. Or thirdly, we could have an air leak on the pickup side. So in a mini gearbox, the pickup comes from a tube inside the gearbox, which runs up to a flange on the side of the gearbox. It then runs through a drilling in the gearbox housing, which has a plate on one side and it has that pipe on the other. Up to an O-ringed uh, fitting on the end, of, or well, on the flat mounting plate of the gearbox, which joins the, um, uh, flange of the engine block and then it goes to another drilling in the engine block out to the oil pump so there's a couple of places along the way there that we could be picking up an air leak and if it's picking up an air leak there it'll cavitate air in the pump and it won't pump oil that's one possibility the second is as I said the oil pump could be not sealing to the side of the block and uh, failed gasket or the gasket moved or is in the wrong spot or something that's the second possibility uh, again allowing the pump to draw oil or draw air and not pump oil cleanly and then the third is there could be something wrong with the pump itself either the shaft could have sheared inside in the pump uh, or the pump could be way out of whack out of clearance or out of tolerance and it could be causing that problem it was a brand new oil pump from a reputable supplier that we put on this engine um, but we have heard in the past of those oil pumps having problems. Uh, we've seen on a few videos ago, we'll put a link to it up there, um, where we took a brand new oil pump apart and the clearances were wrong in it. Uh, and that's something we've been doing uh, very recently. We're taking all the oil pumps apart, even brand new ones now, and measuring them up and checking clearances. Uh, so let's see what it is. Let's get into the meat and potatoes of this. Let's get this uh, uh, gearbox stripped down, or well, we'll get the front end of this engine stripped down. down and find the oil pump. It's very important if you're going to reuse oil, uh, good, you know, good quality oil, that you make sure any container you use is completely clean and clear. You don't introduce any contaminants at this stage. The truth is, is that it is very much, uh, this oil hasn't even been run in the motor. It literally was put in. We tried to get oil pressure up. We didn't, we pulled the motor. So I want to keep this oil, I want to keep it nice and clean. This is the can it came out of, the cap had been screwed back on the can, so we know at least that we won't introduce any contaminants here. While the oil is draining out of that, we can start taking off the uh, wok. As I said, on these, I use these really good quality uh, stainless steel fasteners, which make life real easy when you're taking an engine apart. You don't have to worry about uh, uh, fastener seizing or anything like that. They have a good land on them, so there's no need for a washer uh, on places like here on the drop gear housing. Again, if you can omit a, a failure point, then that's the way to do it on a race engine build. You want to give yourself every possible chance. Uh, it also means that when you're stripping an engine like this, you've got less things to worry about. You're not fiddling around with washers and stuff like that. You'll see in certain places we do use washers, but uh, this place here, it makes more sense uh, not to have them. Once we get this off, then we can make our way towards uh, pulling the flywheel off the end of the crank. 
Thankfully, because we're out here in the open, we can use my KAD uh, uh, flywheel pullers, which is a decent piece of kit. Make sure you keep your eye on uh, your drain plug. You can make an awful mess in the workshop uh, if you get distracted here for a moment and all of a sudden uh, your oil catch, you know, spout moves and it pours a half a litre of oil onto the floor. <laughs> make an awful mess. Be swimming around here. All right, I'll see you in a moment when I uh, have the flywheel puller set up and we can get to pulling the flywheel off. Okay, so let's buzz off this uh, flywheel bolt. So it does help in the workshop to have uh, a good supply of air with good pressure on it when you're uh, taking apart, you know, stuff like this. It just gives you that uh, bit of speed of time and process when you're trying to get these apart. So these keyways, as I said, I make these myself and they really are a really um, good fit in there. So um, you normally need something like a, a pry bar or a big uh, flat ended screwdriver uh, to allow you to just uh, keep that key wave. Uh, recently enough people were asking me uh, why is it that I don't take off the diaphragm? Uh, a couple of people commented on this and was asking me why do I not take the diaphragm off? It's easier to get at this uh, lock washer. The reason I don't take the diaphragm off is I want to try and keep uh, it all as one unit. I want to keep the clutch, flywheel, back plate and clutch plate all as one unit because this was balanced to the crank when I built this motor. So unless there's actually a clutch problem with the engine, I won't ever take this apart. Because once I take this apart, the crank has to come out of the motor and it has to go back to the balancing shop to be all balanced as one. Can you balance a flywheel separately to a crank? The answer is yes, you can. But the design is such of the flywheel that is in a Mini the diaphragm that's in a mini that there is discrepancy for where this can sit it can sit a couple of uh, hundreds of a millimeter off of center because it just sits on a bevel on the end of the crank so will you ever even if this is in balance will it be in the same balance as it was with the crankshaft when you're trying to balance the tolerances like a gram or even a half a gram which is what we balance these two it's very very difficult to make sure that you have truity across the board Yes, you could start initially by balancing the flywheel, balancing the crank, balancing the um, pulley, and then building the whole lot up and checking it for balance. I have done that in the past, and any time I ever do that, there is an indifference. And it doesn't matter how many times you balance the crank, balance the flywheel, balance the pulley, when you assemble the whole lot together, there's always an, a discrepancy and indifference. When you're building race engines, you don't want any discrepancy or, or indifference. For a road car, or even a high performance road car, or even a track day engine, I wouldn't mind the indifference that you see. It's normally about a gram or even less, even three quarters of a gram, which is nothing. But in a race engine, I always want to try and shoot for absolutely perfect, as opposed to close or near enough. Next thing to do is to get the flywheel puller set up and then we can uh, have a go of pulling this crank, uh, this flywheel off the end of the nose of the crank. It should come reasonably easy because the engine hasn't run or hasn't done any uh, major work. Okay, I have my flywheel pullers set up here and uh, I want to show you something. So, uh, guesses in the comments section below, uh, I'm gonna take one out in a few minutes and show it to you, right? But the stud that I use on my pullers, what is it? Um, see how we've got it there. I'll take one. I'll take one out when we get this flywheel pulled off, and I'll show you the stud and see can you guess? It's from an engine, and it, if you've worked on these engines before, the stud will be real familiar. Put it in the comment section below, and uh, when I get the correct answer, I'll let you guys know. Okay, so uh, we connect up the airline, and we'll bring some tension up onto this. Gonna just tighten up this bolt. It's pulling just off the center a little bit, so we'll just tighten up this bolt here uh, and make sure that it pulls dead center. Yeah. 
little bit better. This is one of the KAD colors. Okay, so people often ask me about, am I not worried or scared that this is going to explode off the end of the crank because there's so much energy built up in here. The secret to not having to worry about all the energy built up is having everything really stiff and stout. That's why the puller is made of a really heavy piece of steel. The shaft that's screwing up the tension is really heavy steel and I'm using really high tensile steel head bolts, there's a clue, uh, that really help uh, reduce any spring energy being built up. So there's no spring energy being built up here. Once that taper releases, it'll only move a fraction of a millimeter and the tension will be let off. If you have something where everything is distorting and bending and changing shape, well, in that situation, yes, you can build up a huge amount of spring energy and the flywheel can actually move a big distance when it does release. But in a situation like this where everything is really stout and has loads of energy behind it, not so much. The secret to this is to uh, shock the puller as you're doing it. So we've brought tension up here now and we're going to put a couple of shocks down through the nose of the crank with the hammer and that helps break the tension on the flywheel. So we sometimes it lets go when you do this and then other times not so much. But what you will see is when we put the this on it we'll get another couple of turns now. So we got a couple of turns there. We can give it another couple of shocks. Get another few turns. Very close now. There it goes. All right. That took a little bit more force than I was anticipating, but uh, these steel crankshafts have a really good taper on the nose and everything tends to get really well on there. So uh, it's, it's a good thing. It stops the cranks from uh, ending up having 
any kind of fretting or welding going on when the crank nose is good like that and you get a really good bind on the taper. Okay, next is to get all this ring of bolts out here and then we can pull off this drop gear housing and get a look at the oil pump. Now, have all of these bolts pretty much removed, just this one here. And then next step is to protect this seal. So we won't be replacing this seal because it only just literally went in uh, when we rebuilt the motor. So uh, you've seen me do this before. Uh, just a bit of tape here to protect the feather edge of the seal. These seals have a feather edge to them that if you run it along the serrated surface of the uh, primary trust, uh, sorry, the primary gear, if you run that seal along the primary gear, it can put little nicks into the seal, which you won't ever see but the result will be that the seal will drip and leak oil all the time. So just one last look over to make sure I have all of the bolts out, which I do. And then it's just a case of teasing that housing off. And thankfully the seal remained intact because I want to keep that there. That's one of the OE gaskets, which are really, really good. Uh, and I want to keep that gasket intact. So we'll re be able to reuse that. I just have a shop towel down here just to catch any oil on the ground that, that's going to drip down from the housing. So the very first thing to do is to just uh, pop this pump off and just see is there anything going on here uh, that might indicate why we had uh, no ability to get the oil pressure up. Maybe we'll see a gasket that has moved or isn't in the right place uh, and then that would give us an indication. And then if that doesn't work, we'll have to investigate a little bit deeper. Release these oil pump bolts and we can see what this gasket looks like. Okay, pop these out and pop the pump out and have a quick look and see what we see. Okay, so all the elements of the pump would seem to be working and rotating. And that certainly seems to be pumping oil there. Although funny enough, I do see, you can see the air bubbles being pumped there, <laughs> which is what we were seeing. And that's just because the oil pump is losing oil feed here. Let's have a look at this gasket and see. There's no obvious signs of failure on the gasket, you know, I was expecting to maybe see something like the gasket to be nipped here or broken here on the edge, but everything seems to be okay there. And you can kind of see a stained pattern where the pump has been sitting against the gasket the whole way. The gasket doesn't feel great, but I'm not sure it's the reason why we've seen air if I'm honest. I want to test a little bit deeper. I want to test this pickup and see if we've got a good uh, solid vacuum off this pickup. So I need to get set up for that. So give me a moment or two. Okay, so I'm set up now to do testing on the positive lift of oil up the um, oil control. So what I have here is this is something that I've had for a while in my shop and it allows me to do various different tests. One of them is to test oil lift on the oil lift pump. It's an old housing, it had failed up here, it was broken uh, as a result of uh, a flywheel fell apart. So I repurposed it and used it by just cutting in half. What this allows me to do is access the oil pump but still have a full gearbox full of oil, a full sump full of oil. So I've gone ahead and done that. I've tightened it up with a gasket. I have filled up the gearbox with oil. And I can actually go all the way to putting the flywheel on here, putting the starter motor into the housing and cranking the oil, cranking the engine over until I get oil pressure with this housing setup, which is really useful for, uh, you know, test purposes and diagnosing a problem like this. I'm pretty confident that I don't have an oil pickup problem, but I love to be able to 
rule things out before I strip the engine any further. So what I have here is a test bubble, which is basically a clear tube, a vacuum bubble here in the shape of this little uh, rubber diaphragm, and there's a valve in there. Now it's very important guys, if you're ever making one of these testers up, that they're really, really well sealed. I just used um, uh, acrocyanate, which is a kind of type of super glue, and I have it all really well glued and sealed all the way along. I have a rubber grommet here at the end, which fits really nicely into the oil way. Before I put it in though, I want to just put a little bit of oil around the tip of it here. So just to make sure we get a complete airtight seal. So that gets pushed into the pickup hole. And as you can see, it's a real good fit in there. It needs that oil just to actually fit in there. Now, if there was any kind of air bubble or leak, it would be taken up now by that oil. That oil will help to do that. So what we can now do is we can depress this bubble and we can put my finger over the top and we create a vacuum in the pickup line. So that's drawing air against the pickup line. Eventually what's going to happen is oil is going to start to come up to the bubble. It's going to be sucked up to the bubble as we keep pumping out this air. There's the oil. Now there will be some little bit of air in the vacuum pickup line which has gotten in there from while we were pumping before. So we need to draw up a stream of oil and we're looking to see if we have any air bubbles. So we're looking at this line to see if we pick up any air bubbles. Now I think, okay look, there's a little one there that's been drawn up into the bubble. But we can see this line is flattened down. It's got a lot of vacuum on there and I'm not seeing any air bubbles. If there was an air leak somewhere along the way, it would be being found by this bubble now and it would be being drawn in and we'd see air bubbles constantly coming up this tube into the top of this, um, into this pumping bubble. But we're not seeing that, we're just seeing a really clear flow of oil. I can see oil being drawn up here the whole time. It might be hard for you to see on camera, but I can see it. I can see oil being clearly drawn up here the whole time. So I think we can rule out completely any problem with the oil pickup side. That rules out the O-ring on the gearbox. It rules out the plate here on the side of the box. It rules out any leakage here, and it rules out any leakage inside in the oil pickup, which I was pretty confident wasn't a problem anyway, but I now have clear and present proof of that. So I know 100% I don't have an oil uh, uh, aeration from this side. So now we're down to only two possible reasons why this pump wasn't pumping oil properly. One, the gasket wasn't sealing properly here on the housing, or two, there's an elemental problem in the pump. So let's strip the pump, check the elements of the pump for wear, and if they're okay, then we'll replace with a new gasket, we'll temporarily put the flywheel and starter motor on here, and we'll crank this over again and see can we get oil pressure to come this time. I have the oil pump stripped uh, here on the bench, and I'm just starting to do a little bit of checking with the feeder blade, and I must say, um, the quality of oil pumps at the moment is just really, really upsetting. Uh, this pump literally was brand new off the shelf and already I'm able to get a 5,000 feeler blade between the elements and the pump. You know, it hasn't done any time whatsoever. Um, in some cases I can even get my, uh, sorry, I said 5,000, it's 0.5 of a millimeter. That's actually what it is. Even in some cases, I can get my 0.1 uh, millimeter feeler blade in there, which is, for a brand new pump, is madness. Absolutely crazy. Um, really disappointing when you rely on quality parts and you expect them to be uh, something, and you even have to test brand new components off the shelf to find out whether they're good or bad or different. It's something I've been doing in the last couple of months anyway. Um, this engine is together almost six months and uh, up until that, you could buy a brand new oil pump off the shelf and be very confident that it was going to be a fit and forget item. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like that's the way. Do I think this is why I wasn't getting oil pressure? I'm not convinced. I mean, while there is high clearance there, if I seen low oil pr pressure as a result of this, I'd say, okay. 
I'm not actually seeing anything here that indicates why I'd get low pre oil pressure, other than one thing I did notice, which is a very clear wear pattern on this oil pump back cover. Now we've seen this on the oil pump for the race car as well, for my GT race car, and we had to lap the surface of it in. This should be a precision ground surface, and there is no way that the oil pump components, and you can see where the oil pump components have been rubbing, you can see this deep scoring on the surface of the oil pump components. That's happened as a result of them rubbing on this rough surface of this back plate. So the pump has already been eating itself asunder. I mean, pumps that are doing that to themselves are introducing metal into the oil system, which is beyond madness. I just took apart one of these AP UK pumps. This is one I just have in stock here. Um, and that, by the way, was supposed to be the turbo oil pump option. And straight away, the difference here, I can nearly pick that pump up by the back plate. I can actually feel a vacuum happening there. And the reason for that is, is because you can see the back of this back plate is actually properly ground. You can see where the back plate is ground, precision ground, and has that smooth surface. You can see little rub marks there where I've been testing this oil pump, but no, no discernible sort of, I can't pick anything up with my nail. I rub my finger across this and it's like rubbing my finger across a piece of sandpaper. You can put it up to the mic here, you'll hear it. You know, that's for a precision item. Um, just to show you, this is an, an oil pump. This is a new oil pump. It has been used on a test bed engine, uh, but for nothing more than that. And you can see here where I just can't get that feeler blade in there. That 0.5 mil feeler blade won't go in there which is the way it should be. That's, that's the way a proper oil pump should be. You shouldn't be able to get that feeler blade in there. All right. Um, you certainly shouldn't be able to get a one mil feeler blade in there, you know? Or sorry, a 0.1 of a millimeter feeler blade. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this oil pump. Uh, this is a good quality oil pump uh, made by AP. We're gonna wash it, clean it, put it back together, and we're gonna put this on with a brand new gasket We'll put the flywheel on, connect up the starter motor, and bring up, see can we bring up oil pressure now with this setup. So I'll see you back over at the engine. Okay, so we got the flywheel just temporarily back on, the starter motor in here, the oil pump is back on, and we've back fed the oil. Now I've just linked out the, the um, I've linked out the oil filter by just, uh, sorry, not the oil filter, the, um, oil cooler by just linking straight from the output of the oil pump into the oil filter. I've connected up to my battery here with the starter motor and we can now crank over the motor. I have all the plugs out, obviously you wouldn't attempt to do this with the plugs in because obviously half the bell housing is well, half the drop gear housing is missing and you'd probably just break the starter motor off the side of the engine if it met compression. So with that out we can now crank over the engine and see can we get oil pressure. <laughs> So we've 60 pounds pressure on the starter motor. I think we have solved the problem. This is unfortunately a absolute clear case of a faulty oil pump, uh, which is disappointing because you spend all the time and effort to build an engine really, really well, and you get let down by a part like this. I'm overcoming this now by making sure that every oil pump I fit from now on, I take apart and strip. I'm making this video series to show you that stuff goes wrong even in a workshop like this where I've been building these engines for years and years and years and years and I've been having wonderful success. I want to be honest with you guys and show you that this stuff happens. Problems come and problems have to get solved. I hope you enjoyed following me along to see my thought process and my uh, train of thought on how to overcome problems. A lot of people probably would have just stripped this motor again where there was no need, there was no need to take apart the gearbox. I was confident in my workmanship from the gearbox up as far as here and I knew I had good oil pressure in the engine because we pressure fed the engine from my pressure feed rig, the one I showed you with the fire extinguisher before. So I knew that the engine side of this was perfect, I knew the gearbox side of this was perfect, and I had isolated it to either the pickup pipe, the chute, the pump, or something in this area. And that's why we went to this 
arrangement of, of, of testing it. I'm also further going to make sure in future when I build all my motors, I'm going to bring oil pressure up on the starter motor before I even put them in the car. And I recommend that to you guys as well, given that there seems to be this inconsistency across the board in oil pumps. I think it's something that we're just going to have to do as routine part of building engines going forward from now. Um, okay, so one last final uh, look at what it was that I was using to screw into the flywheel. So these later flywheels that I'm using, use an M10 thread. And a few years ago, I was building another engine and I removed a bunch of head studs. Right, let's see if I can figure out how many head studs. Um, and I'm gonna answer this in a pinned comment later on, uh, maybe during the week and see who got it right. So uh, wait, let's see now, uh, do my maths. Uh, 24 head studs in this particular engine. 24 head studs, it's a German made engine and that's what the head stud looks like. Don't mind that nut there, okay? That nut is the nut I just put on there as a double lock nut so I can take them in and out. That is the original head nut that's what the stud looks like, and that's the tread in the bottom of it. So guess is in the comment section below. I'll be really interested to see if someone can guess what the head stud is out of. Other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, to anybody who's new to the channel, you are most welcome, and I hope you enjoyed today's video. Take a look around. We've loads of other videos. A link to the last video will be up in the corner where we took this engine out of the car. Uh, we now have the oil pressure problem solved. Uh, if you like what you see, maybe give us a subscribe. It really does help the channel. Everybody watching, make sure you bang that like button. Again, it really helps and uh, helps the channel to grow. Comments in the comment section below. I love to answer the comments and I try and answer every comment that I get. So uh, have a chat with me if you want. Ask me any questions and I'll try and clarify it. And um, finally, I know you're asking me about the engine lifting hook. You guys are asking me, and you said you would really like to see the engine hit lifting hook. I'm not forgetting it. It will be in the next video. It's currently holding most of this engine's weight at the moment. And I want to give you a really good look at it. And I want to take a tape measure out and give you some of the measurements and some of the angles. So I promise you in the next video, when this engine is going back into the car and we get the car running, I will then give you a really good look at that lifting hook. Other than that, Thank you very much for joining me in the garage and I'll see you on the next one.